I was first introduced to backpacking and the outdoors um, at 15 years old when I joined a camp much like this one. And it was a pretty transformative experience for me. I hadn't even really had any camping experience before that, let alone backpacking. And that was really my entry point. After two years there and a little break, I returned as a counselor and then logistics coordinator and then cook and then last summer co-director and feel really called to continue uh, providing this opportunity for youth. So felt like this year would be a really great time for me to uh, start my own program here. Uh, outside, outside of uh, camp experience, I've had a lot of time spent on long trails across the country. I've done 2,200 miles on the Pacific Crest Trail. I've done the Colorado Trail. I've done sections of the Appalachian Trail and many, many more. I'm also wilderness first responder along with Millie. And in fact, that's how we first met <clears throat> um, in a course. And when I was envisioning this program, last summer, uh, she was the first person that I thought of uh, to run this with and feels like a really integral part of the program for me, her emphasis on outdoor education and all the experience she has with that. Um, wilderness First Responder, by the way, is uh, medical training uh, with an emphasis on long-term patient care for people in the wilderness who wouldn't have access to immediate medical attention or hospital or any of the regular front country um, medical equipment. So with that, I'll pass it to Millie. Hello. Um, so as you had mentioned, I have been an outdoor educator for the past few years. Um, I feel like I found my calling um, taking kids who come on these five-day field trips. They stay in cabins um, and I'm like a hiking guide and science teacher um, to help engage fifth graders in their surroundings um, using their senses and science lessons and immersion. Um, and then I did a backpacking gig, this um, Skyline to Sea trip uh, that summer after getting my woofer. Um, and that was with teens. So more like what we're doing this summer. Um, and those were nine day trips, um, really, really getting into it. But um, through the camp didn't have as much of an emphasis on this more teaching and engaging in the forest. It was more just, you know, a summer camp where kids came together to hike. And so, um, yeah, really excited to be in partnership here to um, kind of bring what we, what we both love about these camps and make something new. Um, I'm also an avid biker and hiker. Um, did the long trail um, or some of it this year, did some of the Colorado trail, did a big bike trip, just love being out. Um, out in the wilderness away from distractions that's like my latest thing it's just like getting away from distractions and um focusing on your immediate surroundings um currently restoring a garden on this cool learning learning education farm um before outdoor ed is a thing again post pandemic um and i'm obsessed with gatherings something that i really hope to bring this summer is just bringing people together in really intentional ways and using games and, and facilitation to really um, increase connection with people. That's a little bit about me. Thanks, Millie. So we're going to get into a little bit about the actual camp here. And our tagline is stewardship through experience. Our main conduits for accomplishing that are personal and environmental awareness. So big emphasis on encouraging campers um, to get in touch with their immediate surroundings and themselves. Um, of course, this has a huge in environmental implication as far as uh, nature goes, but it extends a lot further um, and is valuable in urban environments and, and everywhere. Of course, the challenge aspect of the program is maybe what most people might think of immediately when they imagine backpacking for three weeks. And it is a really, really important part of what we do, pushing participants mentally and physically um, in a safe environment, but in a really challenging way, is how we get to sort of explore um, new boundaries and, and grow, in fact. And then the immediate experience of the whole thing, um, 
engaging the senses and you know really using your body and and carrying a 30 to 40 pound pack for miles and miles at a time really um offer a, a a pretty amazing embodied experience that that is quite different from what we're doing right now looking at a screen on zoom um, and and really one of our features um, before i move forward through this please feel free to interrupt me anytime with questions um, i definitely want to make this as much of a dialogue as possible so you know um, whether it's about any logistical detail or more of a general question do do feel free to uh, let me know and, and bring it up and I'm sure it'll be useful for all of us to explore. Yeah, Maria. I have a couple of questions. Um, how did you come up with a three weeks for the, the, the length of the trip? Mm -hmm. And my second question is, will there be any showers? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So three we'll weeks without a shower seems like a long time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, in fact, we, we will have showers, um, but let me start with the first question there. Um, we, we came up with a three-week time frame. Um, actually, ideally, and most of the camps I've worked with are actually four-week programs, but three weeks really felt like the uh, appropriate amount of time um, for our itinerary here. Mm -hmm. And um, it just, I didn't want to push it too far into August, um, just as far as school and, and who's available when. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a whole section later on here about the logistics of the backpacking and what it actually looks like, some of the day to day. But um, really briefly here, yeah, we're going to be in the backcountry for three to five days at a time and then coming out, or well, two. Mm, depending on nights or days, like two to five days at a time, and um, coming out of the backcountry then to shower, do laundry, resupply on food, um, we'll give everybody back their phones so they can call their families, and sort of a moment to, to reconnect with civilization before we go on to our next uh, outdoor adventure. Okay. So there it is. The backcountry trips are gonna be um, five, two to five night overnight trips. So there are five primary locations. Um, and we've got a map coming up so you can see exactly where those are. Um, but those are gonna be our main stops along the way. Um, and each day in the backcountry is gonna look like a five to 10 mile trek with an emphasis on acclimatization. So what we really wanna do here is support every camper as much as possible in gradual growth and adjustment to what it feels like to be in the back country um, and be supported by a backpack and in this very new environment um, many of the campers don't have backpacking experience so for a lot of them it's going to be the first time but even for those who have had it this is at a whole new level so our first trip is going to be here in Santa Barbara in the Los, Los Padres National Forest which is at relatively low elevation um, and our trip will just be a one-nighter so it's just a real entry point and as the summer progresses uh, they'll get each a little more intense and um, challenging but the idea here is um, sort of just the perfect amount of challenge with support where each camper can um feel like they're not just thrown into a situation that they they really can't handle but at the same time really challenging their notions of of what they're capable of and um you know just how far they can push themselves and um there there is not going to be anybody who leaves this summer camper or counselor who who hasn't been pushed physically and, and really challenged so it is is definitely a big part of our ethos that we are we are aiming to um, get people to the next level here and and really try to experience something new. Um, do you expect to have campers both that are experienced and campers that this is their first time? And how is that going to work having those together? Yeah. So because we're all going to be in one group, there isn't going to be um, any division based on skill level or physical ability, although we are pretty rigorous in our selection process and aren't just sort of um, accepting everybody. So we, we are selecting on some basis of physical fit. But as it turns out, um, in my experience, most people who come into a program like that are eventually mostly carried by their attitude and their um, mental abilities than their 
as opposed to, you know, their, their physical, whether or not they play lacrosse or on some kind of team or really fit. Um, so the, um, it's, it's a bit of an egalitarian setup. We're all kind of on the same trail doing the same miles. So certainly there will be some people who find that easier and more challenging. Um, and there's, there's not a real obvious way in my mind that uh, things will be leveled. Although I, I will share one thing that happens occasionally um, when there is a camper who's really struggling. Um, I, it, it, it really depends on the case to case, but you know, sometimes other campers, campers will offer to sort of offload some of their gear and carry it for them. Um, I've even seen people taking the entire backpack, so they'll have one on their back and one on their chest just because, you know, their friend is struggling and maybe needs uh, just, you know, five, 10 minutes without the pack on. Um, so those kinds of things occur naturally, but we don't um, have any real way of, um, you know, pushing people physically further than just the natural agenda of the day. That said, we do especially because this is a small program, there are only going to be 12 campers. Um, we do have an opportunity to really look at every camper and um, sort of see where they're being challenged, maybe where they're being challenged too much or where they're not being challenged at all and try to meet them um, at that point. Thank you. Good question. All right, Millie, you want to talk to us about food a little bit? Yes, my favorite. Um... So people kind of tend to wonder, like, how do you eat in the backcountry and what's food at camp going to be like? Um, we don't really have a dining hall. We are based out of a van. Um, so we're going to have a U-Haul in the back where our um, a nice, like, propane stove will be and lots of um, resupply food. So our front country setup is going to be quite nice and cushy. Um, we'll have teams cooking the food um, and normal, like, pots on a, on a stove top. And then the backcountry... Um, Thanks to engineering, there are these amazing devices where you can heat some delicious food, um, whisper lights, and just a little simple gas stove. Um, some of my favorites are peanut soy sauce noodles, some uh, dehydrated tomatoes and pesto, um, lots of different things. And we're going to give the kids some opportunity to um, give some suggestions with these committees that they'll have, which we're really excited about. Um, I love food. I love making it really good because it tastes even better in the backcountry. Um, but definitely emphasis on always bringing a little extra so no one's going hungry. Um, we know that the stomachs get bigger the more that we're hiking. So also accounting for that increased hiker hunger, that's inevitable. Um, and I've, I have experience, you know, preparing food for gluten-free and vegan and all of the dietary restrictions we will definitely um, be able to account for. Yeah, any, any food related? questions oh next yeah always interesting how food tastes better in the back country i've noticed that phenomenon as well yeah, so, so our educational goals um really important uh you want to take it from there mm, yeah why don't you <laughs> um so this is you know my um my my heart spot here is um, bringing in a lot of what I do in outdoor ed to this program um, and not letting it just be teens with a lot of weight on their back conquering a mountain. Um, I think that there's a lot that can be had for the outdoors to be more than just a backdrop um, and to use very simple um, activities and just techniques to really open up each ecology because we're seeing all of California, like many different ecosystems, many different climates. Um, and I'm really excited to just um, do small activities so they'll be able to have a much deeper connection to these different environments that are maybe in their backyard, maybe actually we, we get some folks from elsewhere. Um, yeah, so, so curiosity and awareness um, through different sensory and plant identification things. Um, then we're also gonna have an emphasis on reflection. There's gonna be some solitude time every day because um, these big trips, they just have a lot of opportunity for self-growth, but um, what can happen is it gets filled with just chatter. Um, so there'll be some intentional time of each kid will get a journal. Um, and then I'm also going to introduce sit spots, which is a naturalist technique where you basically just sit and listen. Um, and the more that you do that, the animals actually will come out and you're able to see who lives here, who's sharing habitat here. Um, so yeah, reflection and navigation, some more hard skills that are really important. 
hard versus soft. Um, uh, we're not going to be off trail ever. We're going to be following a trail, but we're going to be teaching map skills and simple compass reading just to navigate, you know, left or right at this intersection. Um, and we'll talk about that again with our leader of the day moment. Um, basic wilderness safety, like we mentioned, we're both wilderness first responder. Um, so we will be, I don't know, we'll be able to um, take care of any serious things happen. But what we want to do is empower all of the teens to listen to their bodies and know, am I really cold right now? Am I too hot? Am I dehydrated? Do I have hot spots like blisters coming? Um, these more like manageable preventative measures. So everyone's happy and healthy. Um, and then, you know, part of this is so they can then go on their trips, maybe taking you all out um, on backpacking trips. So empowering them to feel healthy without leaders. And then leave no trace. Um, some of you may have heard about this. It's more than just not leaving trash um, and leaving only footprints. Um, each ecology has their own leave no trace. Um, uh, little key points um, about like how to, you know, pack up your food and where to use the bathroom and these different things that have different effects on the ecology. And this is really, really important if we're going to be spending time in high impact areas. Um, and so we'll, we'll be We'll be very specific about how to make sure the place is even better than when we when we came to it because part of this is being a steward and so how can we actually be caretakers and not just you know um participants in the land um pass it to yehuda yeah thanks Millie. i'll piggyback there on the leave no trace um for me i like to go a little meta with that because although it definitely is important and pertains to the immediate environment especially in the wilderness I think it can be applied more globally and, and hope to impart that on campers um, that any environment that you walk into, you can leave better than you found. Um, and, and I think that kind of attitude that we're aiming to nurture here um, is really important and impactful for campers to, to realize that what they do has consequence and where they go and, and how they act. Um, does matter and and in some sense leaves a trace no matter what you do um but we're able to make that a positive trace and something that you know um they can look at and and really realize that they've, they've done something well there so even if it is a campsite or we walk on an area that has been littered or is messy we have an opportunity to you know do a little trail cleanup day um and actually improve the environment and and help the ecology of any place we go to so that feels like a very important piece to me the empowerment and responsibility piece um, is also a part of that and one of the ways that we accomplish it is through our committees so tents will be split up into groups of three or four split by gender and um, there will be four primary committees that it will be split by kitchen, loading and unloading, campsite management, and uh, bus cleanup. So the kitchen committee, and these will rotate every week. So every camper, every tent will get a chance to experience what it's like to be in each of these committees. Um, so the kitchen committee is responsible um, for feeding camp, essentially, um, while Millie and I will be there to support them in that. And, you know, for many of them, it will be the first time that they've ever tried to cook anything. Um, it, will, it, will, it will fall on them um, to actually, you know, put together um, a meal and clean up all the equipment afterwards. Um, and serve it as well um, and it's a really exciting chance of notice that's tends to be some campers favorite part of a summer will just be ending ending up working in a kitchen and and getting to serve um, and and really I mean it's it's quite impactful um, having that level of responsibility um, it's just so tangible our loading and unloading committee is going to be responsible for um, all of the gear and luggage and kitchen on the bus. Um, so as we leave and enter new places, they will be packing and unpacking and repacking the gear and all of the luggage, everything that uh, we're traveling with. Um, then we've got our campsite management who are kind of our leave no trace people. So anytime we leave a campsite, whether we're in the front country or the back country, and by front country, I just mean anywhere that's not the back country, anywhere that's not a wilderness area that we're backpacking to. So that could be a, you know, um, an Airbnb or a campsite um, that's been established, um, but it could also, you know, 
be any town or gas station. So the campsite management people are basically charged with making sure that we leave every place clean and without litter and without impact. Um, and then finally, our bus cleaning committee, uh, generally the most looked down upon committee. Um, these guys are responsible for making sure that our bus stays clean. You know, it's 14 people living out of a 15 passenger van for three weeks. Things tend to get pretty unruly if the bus committee isn't on top of it. So they're really charged with keeping things clean and, and organized and clearing everything out. And usually at each uh, main stop, we'll, we'll sort of charge each committee with, you know, a task. I mean, kitchen's pretty easy. They know three times a day, but sometimes it's not obvious when bus committee is up for uh, bus cleaning. So we kind of nudge them in the right direction there. Another really important part of our responsibility empowerment segment of the camp is our leader of the day program. So every single camper will um, be charged with leading um, us in the back country for at least one day. Um, so they'll have the map and compass, they'll get a general briefing before we head out and then they will get to make the call as we start walking, you know, where we're turning and, and where we're going. Um, and we actually try to be pretty hands off um, as far as telling them what the right way is. We, we're, not, we're not trying to really give them the answer and, and tell them where to go. I think the important part here is that they, they are making the decision and that um, if they make a wrong turn, you know, that, that can happen. Um, and, and every time I think about this, I think of the larger landscape of life, you know, it's like, we make mistakes and that's that's an important thing to realize here is that just because you make a wrong turn on the trail not only does it not mean that um the trip is ruined in fact sometimes some of the more exciting experiences i've had on trail is when that happens and and then we have to reorient and actually get back on the right track um so it's an opportunity for you know campers to use their skills but also simply just have the experience of making decisions. Um, and of course, I'll be with a locator beacon the entire time and aware of what choices are being made. So it's not um, quite a free for all. But, you know, the fact is that we want campers to experience, you know, at least semi consequence that, you know, things things can happen and it might not even be their fault, right? A trail can have a tree that had fallen in front of it and, and that confuses somebody as far as which way to go in navigation. So it's a real, or as, as real as we can get here with, you know, which, which way to go and empowering people to lead our trips. Uh, before I jump into logistics here, any questions? Yeah, on the last, if you go back to the last slide, I mean, that was, that was uh, goals and responsibilities, the goals that Lily mentioned, the responsibility you're talking about, these are like valuable to, any middle school or high school, I'm actually any adult as well, myself included. How are you, how are you mark, how are you reaching out to the right communities to, to, to get your to get your campers? Mm. How you, because these seem to be, I mean, are you appealing to high schools or to? Because these goals would be would really fit together. I don't know. I'm just asking. Mm. Yeah, so we're trying to reach um, campers through a variety of ways because it's our first year as an official program. It, um, it is a little more challenging. Um, so most of the signups we're getting um, have been through like either word of mouth or people that I've been at least semi-connected to through my travels. Um, and I feel like that it has actually uh, is a pretty good barometer. Um, but the, the main part of how we're vetting people is through our interview process. Um, so when you fill out the application on the website, um, it's pretty extensive and you have to fill out references as well as a lot of personal experience. And before we even contact you directly, we've spoken to at least two of your references. Um, to really right now. Yes. Try and get an idea of um, who the camper is and, and where they stand. And, and then, speaking to parents and guardians and then speaking to the campers so it's a sort of ordered process of how how we're getting people and that that is kind of um i would say our our system 
for for who we're taking in a camp um you know any anybody can apply really um so it's it's kind of up to our um judgment ability there and and then of course after all of that you know people will show up to camp and and um you know it's i think it's impossible to really truly tell uh who's who until until boots hit the ground and that that's really as camp starts we get to see that and and learn to figure out who each kid is and and where their needs are and and where they are in life um, and that's kind of the more um real tangible part of of seeing who's who's in our camp I was just going to sum and say room to grow, but a good attitude, I think are like the key attributes that we will be looking for in applicants um, is that, you know, we don't want a, a camper who's been through programs a ton and has all of these skills before is not our ideal candidate. So we, we definitely want room for growth, but because of the challenging, we, we want a good attitude. That's, mm. my, that's my spark notes version. <laughs> Thanks, Millie. Yeah. Bringing it back. I appreciate that. Yeah, that's that's definitely uh, those those are the qualities that we're looking for for sure. Okay, so I'm um, just going to run through some of the more nitty gritty details of um, what uh, what day to day is going to look like. So our first day of camp, um, July 21st. Uh, we're going to have a group campsite in Los Padres um, where everybody will um, be tasked to meet us and drop off. Um, there will be a small group coming up from Los Angeles. Um, we already have one out of state person coming in, um, anticipate potentially more. So we'll have a sort of carpool up from Los Angeles meeting us up here. Um, and then our first backpacking trip won't be too far away from where um, our group site is, and that will sort of give us a little bit of a cushion, um, you know, before heading up to the Sierra Nevadas. We'll store, we'll be semi-local, and if, um, you know, if we need to, for whatever reason, be in town or be in contact with families, we'll still get that first backcountry experience before we actually really start heading off on the road trip. Um, so we have our five primary areas that we're going to be visiting, but we're also going to be passing just countless um, other beautiful areas like Lassen Volcanic and Plumas and many, many more that um, we'll be doing day, day hikes in or little um, rest stops in. So there's really going to be uh, an immense sort of introduction to California, or maybe not introduction for some of them, but like a real hands-on firsthand um, tour of the state. And another really important part of our main backpacking area is the flexibility. So a month before camp, I'm actually going to be going out to all of our areas and doing a dry run of our backpacking trips um, to really just get the most up-to-date um, trail conditions and information on the areas. And as I'm doing that, although I've actually already been to all of these areas and done these routes, I'm gonna be keeping an extra eye out for potentially um, extending or shortening any routes, having alternatives um, in our back pocket. And after each camper is accepted, they'll um, receive a sort of rough itinerary, but um, it really is actually pretty dependent on what conditions are like when we get to trail, what's the weather like, um is there any snow or other you know environmental concern and um you know especially with covid well last year in particular but potentially this year you know what's open what's what's available for us right now all the national parks uh national forests rather are open and available for use but we don't uh count on anything being the case so we have a little bit of room and flexibility in our itinerary here um and with that covid19 um, we are going to be requiring everybody coming into ta uh, to camp get tested prior to the program or, um, and or be uh, vaccinated. And then as we um, have our first day or two, we're going to be continuing to monitor for signs as we become a pod. Um, it's important that everybody is feeling good and, and not displaying any symptoms. Um, 
And then as we're traveling, it will also continue to be a priority to uh, isolate ourselves, of course, on the trail and nature is a great place to do it, but also, you know, during our stops, whether we're stopping to shower or resupply at a grocery store, um, it, it will be a high priority for us to make sure that everybody is following correct uh, protocol, especially because many of the stops we're making will be in small towns and places that might not otherwise have exposure. And then, of course, um, safety of our campers and not exposing anyone in the camp as we're going to be a pretty tight unit. Um, it just wouldn't bode well for anybody to have potential for exposure. Um, as uh, everybody signs up and gets through the application process and the interview, um, and is accepted, we will be sending emails out with um, that rough itinerary, medical forms that need to be filled out before camp, uh, information on the camp's insurance policy, the payment schedule, um, as well as all the other information um, regarding uh, camp and, and what you need to know as parents. Um, we'll go over a couple of our more prominent camp rules here. Um, there is a pretty extensive application online that details all of the camp rules and all the expectations for campers coming in, but some important things to be aware of is that we're pretty strict, no phone, no screen policy, um, especially on our day-to-day. -day. As we mentioned, we will have um, set times where campers will receive their phone backs and the opportunity to charge them and call back home, but um, Outside of that, we're going to be keeping a pretty strict hold on it, and um, that's really generally initially very hard for campers, but actually really gives them the opportunity, especially because we're going to be spending a lot of time in the bus. Um, so instead of going right to their phone, they'll get to interact with the people around them and have just that much more engagement um, that isn't phone-based. Um, another Important concern is camper safety, is this is a co-ed program. Um, we're gonna be pretty strict on um, tent spaces as anybody who's assigned to a tent, the three or four people uh, in your tent will need to pretty strictly stay that. There's not gonna be any commingling tolerated between tents. And of course we do not have any tolerance for drugs, alcohol or vape, any uh, substance in the program will be uh, noticed and um, will require some further action. Um, if it is flagrant and continues to be a problem, we will ask campers to leave the program. On that cheerful note, <laughs> why uh, CAVA Camp? So we'll start with and this is kind of our, our wrap up before we get into general question and answers and you know um finish our our program here um but something that millie and i are really excited about is because we're a small organization um and it's it's just us two running and leading the program um boots on on ground here um we're gonna have a lot of flexibility on what we can do we are the organization and, and both of us are used to sort of working in larger camps, um, even at, you know, the director level or the senior naturalist level and not being able to really run the program that we want and, and have the freedom to, to um, follow what we're excited about. We're both very passionate people and have a lot of ideas about what we like. So this is sort of our chance to really fully get to play that out. Um, I think another big important selling point on our camp is that it's a fun challenge. So not only will it be a really good time, but it, it is a sort of positive type of good where um, we'll, we'll be challenging and growing together um, and, and getting to experience a lot that's new and um, really, really uh, just get to experience what it's like to be in the wilderness. Of course, we have our hard skills, the backcountry navigation, um, some of the basic um, wilderness first aid stuff, um, as well as potentially, you know, knowing how to whip up a dish in the kitchen, um, setting up a tent as you see these guys doing here. Um, there, there are quite a number 
of hard skills that um, campers tend to come out with just because they're faced with a new environment where they need to learn how to, you know, strive and survive. Um, last thing I'll mention here is the three sort of pillars here that we're hoping to inspire independence, confidence, and leadership. Um, the guarantee that I make to anyone coming into this program uh, is that they're not going to leave the same person they came in as. Um, and that is built on everything we've been discussing here, the experience of what it's like to be in the back country, um, to be living off of everything in your backpack with a small group and a team, um, having the chance to orient yourself and lead, um, to really make decisions that have impact and be aware of your environment. These are all the things that we will be encouraging and have built this program to support. And that's all I got for the spiel. I uh, would love to answer any more questions you guys have, thoughts or comments. What's the timeline for applying? What's the deadline, I guess, for applying? Yeah, so truth is there's no deadline as soon as we're full we're going to stop accepting applicants. So um, I would imagine probably the people applying a month or two before camp uh, won't get in. Um, we've really just now started to even accept and field um, applications. So there, there's a pretty good chance at this point of someone applying and making it through the, you know, as, as long as they fit um, in a camper. So um, I wouldn't wouldn't push it off too long, but it's if there there's no set deadline. It's just as soon as we're full, um, that's it. We're not going to push past twelve. We just won't be able to support that larger number of campers. I have one more question. Mm -hmm. um, do you guys have any plans to do this for adults? Because <laughs> I want to go on this trip. <laughs> You know, uh, we spent our uh, last Sunday tabling out at uh, the market and ran into that so consistently. And as I'm doing this, and hearing more people, you know, it it's either that or, you know, for the younger age range. Um, so there are no concrete plans for that. But the more I hear it, the more I, I think it might be a good idea. Um, but Yuda, I haven't told you this yet, but this is my plan is next summer. I'm going to take all the interested adults. And that's like one of my dreams is engaging adults with their environment. So yes, oh my gosh. Um, okay. there's going to be a Kaaba for adults and I will spearhead it. And I'm excited about it. It's amazing how much interest there is. Like, a lot of 20 to 30 year olds are like, I wish that my parents sent me that as a teenager and <laughs> everyone wants it now and it's not too old to yeah, get lost in the woods. So anyway, thanks for that question. That I was, think it sounds really fun. And I, you know, we'll, we'll talk about it with our, our son and see if he's like up for it. But if not, and if you guys ever, you know, decide to do it for adults, let us know. <laughs> Yeah, well, you're on our email list now if you've made it this far into the Zoom, so you'll hear about it, um, and it sounds like Millie's got some some plans there. Um, what I'll say on that for me is that um, while I think it's it's would be incredible for adults, um, what I'm passionate about is this age range. I think the potential here for, for growth and impact is huge, that um, teenagers you know, are often sort of looked down upon group and, and that they really, in, in my five years of working in programs like this, have just seen the most remarkable transformations and um, am, am really impressed and excited about bringing this to uh, that age range. All right, before we close out here, final questions, comments? All right. Well, thank you guys for joining us. I'll reach out to each of you directly and um, feel free, please spread this around. Anybody you know who might be interested, um, we are still enrolling and um, this will be recorded for anyone who wants to uh, reference. The website's also an incredible resource for people to visit and learn more about the program. All right. 
I bid you do. Have a good night and uh, happy trails. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye. Bye.